morning to everyone. Parang tulog ulit ha. Good morning! Amen. Sige nga po, bigyan natin ng best clap offering ating Panginoon. Amen. God is good in God's house. God is good in our lives. And we just want to give glory to His name. And today, syempre, bago po tayo magsimula, ano po ang sineselebrate natin ngayon? Happy Father's Day po sa lahat ng fathers na nandito. At pakigreet naman kung may nakikita po kayong mga tatay sa tabi niyo, please greet them a Happy Father's Day. Ayan, so Happy Father's Day po to everyone. And sa lahat po ng mga tatay na nandito, ko just invite you to please stand up for all the fathers who are here para kayo po ay ating ma-recognize. Sige po lahat po ng tatay, tayo po ito mayo. And let's give them a warm welcome, a COG clap offering sa mga tatay. Sige po, just remain standing here. At uh, maibibigay pong mga mag, may isa po tayong member po dito sa church na nag-sponsor po ng mag at ibibigay po namin yan sa inyo. And for the fathers here, tayo po ay gusto po namin kayo ipanalangin. Uh, so, sige po, let's just remain standing and just want to let you know that God's favor is upon the fathers of this house. At ang pabor po niya ay patuloy nakikilos po sa ating buhay. Amen po ba yun? Amen. And just lay our hands to the fathers who are here. And Lord Jesus Christ, our God, thank you for this wonderful time. And Lord God, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. And we just want to lift your name on high. And Lord God, ang mga tatay po na nandito, Lord God, we just ask, Lord God, for your blessing, your anointing, and your wisdom, and your favor, Lord God, to continually pour out in their lives, Lord God, as they lead their families, as they are here, Lord God, Lord God, speak to them your word, and may their lives be never be the same again, Lord God, only for greater glory, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, and bless their families, and bless us, Lord God, for the rest of this day. We love you so much, God, we claim the victory, and we give you back all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen. And amen. Sige po. Palakpaan po natin ating Panginoon. Palakpaan po natin mga tatay. And happy Father's Day again to everyone. And right now, are you excited to hear God's Word? Parang mahina ulit. Are you excited to hear God's Word? Amen. And I'm also excited to be here. I'm excited to preach to you God's Word. At alam niyo po sa aking pag-prepare po sa ating message, uh, isa pong nakita ko po na kailangan natin maging prepared ay isang pong ganito. Sino pong may mga insurance na po dito sa buhay? Sino po yung mga, may mga insurance? So yan po, may mga insurance, mga daddies po natin, mga fathers. Sila po ay nag invest po dito sa insurance. Kasi po sa ating pag-prepare for my preaching for today, inisip ko po, ano po ba yung difference ng insurance at saka ng assurance? May pinagkaiba po ba yun? Or these two words are just the same? So ano po ba insurance? Ang insurance po pala provides coverage for the things na unforeseen events. So for example, tayo po ay naaksidente at uh, suddenly tayo po ay nagkaroon ng car accident. If we are insured, the insurance company will pay for all your expenses. So ganyan po ang nangyayari. At uh, siguro po kapag sa office naman po, sa, pag, sa may business, kapag may uh, accidental injury in the office, pag insured ka, ang office na po magbabayad doon, ang insurance company po ang magbabayad doon. So all the things that are unforeseen, all the accidents that had happened, ang insurance po, they will pay it all back. So sa pagbabasa ko po sa internet, as I research, ang number one, ang top insurance company po pala, ang kanyang premium income, ang kanyang kinikita out of this insurance po ay nagtataginting po na 32.8 billion pesos. So, 32.8 billion ang number one insurance company sa Pilipinas. Ibig sabihin po, talagang maraming nag gusto ma-insure ang kanilang buhay, maraming gusto maging insure ang kanilang kotse, kasi takot po sila for the unforeseen events. So, they want this insurance in their lives. So, hindi po ako nagbebenta ng insurance ngayon, na So, pero pwede niyo po ako i-consult mamaya pag tayo po ay nagpika-pika sa lobby. So, in contrast naman po, ano naman po ang difference niya sa assurance? Sabi po dito, ang assurance po, it provides coverage for the events that will occur. So, assurance means for all the things that are gonna happen. For example, death, we're sure that someday when we grow old at the right time, we're gonna experience death, we're gonna go to our Father in Heaven. And gusto natin prepared tayo. Everything na maiiwanan natin dito, it's all assured na mababayaran po lahat. For our retirement, 
Gusto po natin mag-retire ng maayos, kaya we put our money into investments. So when the retirement days come, tayo po ay prepared. Pag tayo po sa mga tatay, we, we, we want our kids to be assured na sila po ay makakaaral sa school. That's why we put our money in assurance so that we are assured na meron po silang kakainin, meron po silang panggagasto sa araw-araw. We have our provision for our daily needs. So provisions for the things that will surely occur in our lives. So ngayon po, kung tayo po ay nagbabayad po for the insurance na for the unforeseen events, yung mga hindi natin sure na mangyayari, all the more na gusto natin ilagay ang ating pera sa mga mangyayari sa ating buhay for our day-to-day living. Yan po ang assurance provided for all the things that will happen or occur in our life. So right now, nasang anong series po ba ulit tayo ngayon? No, wala na nakaalala. Anong series po ulit? The Book of Ruth. At ngayon po, you could join me in Ruth chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. At tignan po natin, ituloy po natin yung ating kwento from last Sunday. So this is what happened. Now, Boaz said to her, said to Ruth, at mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and passed the parched grain to her. And she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. So siya po ay, basically po, siya po ay pinakain sa araw na yon ni Boaz. She was fed, she was well provided for that very day. And what happened next, in verse 15 it says, And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. Hayaan mo siya. So sa ginagawa ni, ni Ruth na pag sa pagguha ng mga grain na nahuhulog, Wag niyo siyang sawayin, just allow her, let her do her thing. So lahat ng kanyang gagawin for the next days, for tomorrow, okay na, pinayagan po. It was approved by Boaz. And lastly, and let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her. So si Boaz po ay may special treatment para kay Ruth. So sabi niyo, sadyain yung mahulog yung mga ani para may mapulot si Ruth. So Wow! Very blessed po si Ruth sa kay Boaz. At basically po, ano po na experience ni Ruth from Boaz? What is Ruth experiencing from Boaz? Number one, she has assurance for today. Everything that she's gonna eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, it is all well provided for her by Boaz. And not only that, she was assured for tomorrow. Sinabu- sinabihan na po ni Boaz ang kanyang mga tao, let her do her thing, let her work here and provide everything for her. And not only that, she, gi- she was given the assurance for the coming days. Hanggang matapos po yung barley harvest, sabi ni Boaz, let the grain purposely fall for her. So everything well provided. Sarap po ng buhay ni Ruth po, no? Tama po ba yun? Sarap ng buhay ni Ruth, she, uh, she is assured of everything in her life right now, hanggang matapos po ang barley harvest. And because of that, si Ruth po, kinento niya po yun kay sa mother-in-law niya. Sabi niya kay Naomi, Naomi, ito po yung ginawa sa akin ni Boaz. She, uh, he assured me of everything that I need until the end of barley harvest. So what did Naomi say to Ruth? It says here in verse 20, sabi niya, May the eternal, may God, bless this man. He has not given up showing his covenant love toward the living and the dead. This man is a closely rel- related to us. He is a kinsman redeemer of our family. So little did they know, si Boaz po pala is a close relative. Boaz is a kinsman redeemer. Pakitanong nga yung katabi mo, ano yung kinsman redeemer? So parang first time natin narinig yan. Ano, ano ba yung kinsman redeemer? So, ang kinsman redeemer pala, ito pala ang kanyang task. What is a kinsman redeemer? Ang kinsman redeemer is the re- nearest blood relative. Siya yung pinakamalapit na kamag-anak ng mga tao. At ano pong ginagawa niya? Anong kanyang task? The task of the kinsman redeemer is to redeem the poor of their sold possessions. At yan po kasi si Ruth, yan po si Naomi. Sila po ay dating uh, pinagpapala, sila po ay maraming pera before, kaya lang po na matay ang kanilang asawa, and they experienced famine, napilitan po sila to sell all their possessions. At ngayon po sa mga nakuha mo nila, po nila from their possessions, ubus na po lahat yun. They sold everything. So ang trabaho po ng kinsman redeemer is to redeem the poor, their blood relative, and what will they do? What will the kinsman redeemer do? 
buy it all back. Lahat ng benta nila Ruth, lahat ng benta nila Yomi, kung sila po ay magkakansundo na si Boaz ang kinsman redeemer, bibilhin po ulit lahat 'yon ni Boaz. So ang sarap po, di ba? Lahat nung nawala kay Ruth, lahat nung nawala kay Naomi, ibabalik sa kanila ni Boaz kung sila po ay magkasundo. So in verse 1, ito po ang nasa isip ni Naomi. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well for you? Sige, pagkakataon na natin to. Naomi was thinking this is a blessing from the Lord. Here's Boaz. He's a blessing from the Lord. He could be able to redeem us from what we're experiencing right now. And that's what we're going to talk about today about the book of Ruth. At ito na po ang lifetime assurance. Sino po dito gusto ng lifetime assurance? Amen. We want lifetime assurance. We don't want assurance lang for today. We don't want just assurance for tomorrow, not just for the coming days. But in our whole lifetime, gusto natin assured na at settled na ang ating buhay. Amen po ba doon? Amen. At yun po ang pwedeng ibigay. Possible pa lang. Opportunity na pwedeng ibigay ni Boaz para sa family ni Ruth and Naomi. So with regards to that, kay Ruth po, it's also her chance to get married para po matuloy po ang lifetime assurance niya and redeem all that they had lost dahil po sila ay naghirap. So right now, before po tayo ay mag-proceed sa Word of God, let us all bow our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just invite your presence to be in this place. Lord God, I don't want to do this by might nor by power, but only by your Spirit. Lord God, these are not my words. Lord God, this is not just me preparing it, Lord God, but it is you. Lord God, it's your words, Lord God, and I'm just here tasked, Lord God, to deliver it. Lord God, use me as your mouthpiece. Lord God, I ask for your anointing. I ask for your wisdom. I ask for your favor, Lord God. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds, Lord God, that we may just freely receive your word. Here we are, Lord God, ready and willing to receive your word in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We claim the victory for today, and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen and amen. So give, let's give God our very best clap offering. So, my lifetime assurance po ang binibigay ng Panginoon para sa atin. At who gets, who gets the privilege to have this lifetime assurance in our lives? Sino ba? Sino ba ang credible? Sino ba ang makakatanggap ng lifetime assurance? But you know what? Sometimes kasi pag hindi natin nakukuha yung lifetime assurance, may mga bagay tayo that we think this will be the assurance of our lives. Dito natin minsan inaasa yung ating buhay. Tulad po ng pagkuha ng master's degree. So sabi po dito, keep calm and get a master's degree. So minsan po, feeling po natin, basta ako yung may master's degree, automatic. Meron na akong magandang trabaho. Pag ako po ay may master's degree, automatic. Talagang 100,000 na kagad yung aking sweldo. Pero minsan po, hindi po ganun pala ang nangyayari. Kahit may master's degree ka minsan, pag pumasok ka, pantay-pantay pa rin. Or sometimes, ang inisip po natin na assurance ay pagpunta sa abroad. Minsan po, inisip natin, basta makaalis lang ako sa Pilipinas, makapunta ako sa US, makapunta ako sa Europe, doon ako mag-work, work abroad. Yan ang aking assurance, sigurado. Hindi na ako maghihirap, sigurado, pagyayamanin ako ni Lord. Pero minsan, hindi din po nangyayari. Or minsan po, ang ating assurance, madalas po ang ating assurance ay sa isang big offer. Pakitan na nga yung katabi mo, meron ka ba niyan? Pwede ba magpa-assure ng buhay sa'yo? <laughs> Basta may good offer, may big offer. Sige, papasukin natin. Kaya alam isang, sige po, meron tayong big offer, nakamit po natin yan. Pero at the end of the line, hindi rin po pala niya tayo isasatisfy. So sometimes we think this is the assurance of our lives. Kaya po ito po yung nangyari kay Ruth in verse 22. Chapter 2 verse 22, it says here, And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women and that people do not meet you in other field. Sabi ni Naomi, ina-advise niya ngayon si Ruth, Naomi, this is a good opportunity, this is a good privilege. Diyan ka na lang. Just stay here with his young women at huwag ka na maghanap ng ibang mga field, huwag ka na maghanap ng ibang landowner. Just stay here in the land of Boaz. So kung ako po si Ruth, pwede pong marami po akong pinagdadaanan ng insecurities, 
Siguro sasabihin ko, nako, hindi ko naman kasing itsura yung mga women ni Boa. Siguro sobrang gaganda nun. Siguro educated yung mga kasama niya na young women. And sometimes because of our insecurities, we're tempted to get out from there. Siguro po si Ruth po ay natatempo na marami naman, marami naman may other field dyan. Marami naman ibang landowner dyan. Pwede siyang pumunta doon sa mas bata, sa mas mayaman, sa mas comfortable na field. At pwede po siyang umalis doon. Especially, sometimes we get to uh, choose another offer kapag nothing is happening in our lives right now. Pag walang nangyayari, may ibang offer, ang daming insecurity sa buhay natin. Sometimes, it's easy for us. Ito po ang nagiging reason para po tayo ay umalis at i-assure ang ating buhay sa ibang bagay. Naalala ko po tuloy yung isa kong kaibigan na nasa ministry din po at hindi po siya taga sa church na ito. At itong pong kaibigan ko po na ito, talaga pong ginagamit siya ng Panginoon. So blessed po siya sa ministry niya. Siya po ay pinagpapala. Kaya lang po may nag-assure po sa kanya. in po sa kanya na, uy, may work dito abroad. Siya naman, dahil feeling niya, uh, kulang ang kanya nakukuha dito sa Pilipinas. Ano pong ginawa niya? Sige, he got that assurance. Punta na siya abroad. Sabi niya, dito na ako mag-work. Pagpapalain ako ni Lord. Dito na ako bubuo ng pamilya. Kaya lang po, ano po nangyari? Madalas po ito nag- ang nangyayari sa atin. Pagpunta niya po sa abroad, wala pa lang nakaabang na trabaho sa kanya. Wala pala siyang mahanap na work. Wala pala siyang future doon. So, dami po niyang ginastos para lang po makapunta doon. Kaya lang po, naubos na po lahat. Kaya po nung pagbalik niya dito, pambihira. He was having a hard time to start all over again here in the Philippines. Na wala po siya sa tamang track. Kaya po minsan, ganun po sa atin, sometimes may offer ang mundo. Pero kanina po tayo kakapit? San po natin ikakapit? San po natin i-assure ang ating buhay? Kaya po tignan po natin kung ano pong ginawa ni Ruth sa kanyang buhay in verse 23. It says here, So, she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of the barley harvest and wheat harvest and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. So ano pong ginawa ni Ruth? Kahit po maraming temptation na siya ay umalis, kahit po maraming offer para po ng ibang tao, may mas mayayaman pa po kaysa kay Boaz, ano pong ginawa niya? Who gets to have that lifetime assurance? Those who stay the path. Pakitano nga yung katabi mo. Do you stay the path? Alam ko po marami tayong pinagdadaanan ngayon, may mga offers po sa inyo ang mundo. Pero will you stay the path para makuha talaga yung lifetime assurance ng ating buhay? At alam niyo po, isa po yan sa talagang mensahe ng aking tatay sa Church of God Philippines at sa Church of God Dasmarinas. Dahil po nung unang mga ta- panahon, before he started the ministry, siya po ay magiging immigrant na po sana ng Canada. So papunta po siya ng Canada, kaya lang po ta- siya po ay tinawag ng Panginoon. Imbis na Canada, Cavite po pala. So, magkatunog lang naman, pero Canada to Cavite. At alam niyo po, mahirap po sa kanya yon kasi ang ganda, na po ng, ang ganda po ng possibility na maging buhay niya po sa Canada. Lahat po, well provided po para sa kanya doon. Pero tinawag po siya ng Panginoon eh. Sabi po ng Panginoon, hindi ka sa Canada, dito ka sa Cavite. At ayan po, siya po ay sumunod sa Panginoon. Uh, nag, medyo mahirap din po yung aming start sa buhay. Pero tignan naman po natin pag siya po ay pinagpala ng Panginoon. Pinagpala po talaga ang Panginoon ang kanyang buhay at ngayon po, 13,000 members po ang COG Das Marinas at patuloy pa po sila nag-grow ngayon. Amen? Amen and amen. At yan po ang mensahe na iniiwan ng daddy ko sa simbahan at sa akin na mahalin po natin yung ating sariling bansa. Hindi po aksidente na nilagay tayo sa Pilipinas, hindi po aksidente na tayo po ay nilagay dito sa Manila at may purpose ang Panginoon sa atin dito. At alam, alam niyo po, minsan po, hirap na hirap po tayo dito sa Pilipinas. Minsan nakikita natin walang possibilities, daming challenges, walang business, walang trabaho. Pero hindi pa po tapos ang Panginoon sa kanyang trabaho dito sa Pilipinas. Amen? Amen. At yan po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon sa atin. Yan din po ang iniwan sa akin ng daddy ko. Na nung ako po ay nag-work, ang dami rin po nilang, ang dami pong offer to go to Malaysia, to go to abroad. Nung ako po ay nasa ministry na rin po ngayon, ang dami rin pong offer. Dito ka na lang sa Los Angeles mag, ano, magpastor. May mga taga Church of God din po tayo doon na ini-invite tayo. Doon ka na lang, dito ka na lang. 
Pero hindi po eh. Dito po ako tinawag ng Panginoon sa Manila. Dito po ako tinawag ng Panginoon sa Pilipinas. At alam ko po, pagpapalain ako ng Panginoon dito sa ating sariling bansa. Amen? Amen and amen. Hallelujah. At alam ko, alam ko po, sa inyo rin po, may pangungusap ang Panginoon sa inyo. At naniniwala po ako, paglaban po natin ang ating bansa. Dahil mahal po natin ang ating sariling bansa. Amen? Amen. At lalago po tayo, pagpapalain tayo ng ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Sige nga po, let's give God a blessed cap offering once again. So what happened, as, as Ruth stayed the path, as Ruth stayed her course, in verse 2 it says, Now Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. So now, behold, andito pala si Boaz. Timing na timing. Andito si Boaz at the threshing floor at where he needs to be. So kung si, Naomi, si Ruth po ay hindi nag-stay the path, kung si Ruth po ay pumunta sa ibang lugar, hindi niya po maaabutan si Boaz. Hindi niya po maaabutan ng kanyang possible partner in life. At yan po ang sinasabi sa atin ni Lord ngayon, don't miss your Boaz. Pakitignan ngayon katabi mo, siya na ba ang Boaz mong buhay mo? So, hindi natin sure kung siya na ang inyong boas. So, pero more than being a partner in life, sino ba tong boas na to? Ang boas is our, yan ang illustration ni Lord para sa atin. He's the chance for lifetime assurance. Maa-assure ang buhay ni, ni Ruth, hindi lang today, hindi lang tomorrow, hindi lang sa coming days, pero lifetime at a possibility na ma-redeem kung ano ang kanilang nawala. Marami pong nawala kay Ruth at Naomi. Sila po ay naghirap, halos zero na po sila. Everything lost. At ito po yung chance nila, yung boas po nila. Ang kanilang chance para po makaahon sa buhay. Kaya don't miss your boas. Lalo na po kung tayo po ay dumaan sa ganitong trahedya. Tulad po na nangyari po sa Resorts World. So I think two, mga two weeks ago po yan nangyari. At mga 34 to 37 po ang mga namatay po, casualties po natin dyan sa Resorts World Manila. Alala po ang effect nito, ang naging effect po nito, malaki po ang naging effect nito sa mga employees po ng, ng Resorts World. Marami po nawala ng trabaho kasi po naka-close down po sila for, for how many days. Malaki po ang impact nito for the Resorts World itself. Sila po ay nawala ng business. Malaki rin po ang resulta po nito for the whole Philippines, specifically Manila. Kasi po ang uh, bumagsak po ating tourism just because of one gunman. Dahil lang po sa isang shooter, ang bihira, naapektuhan po ang ating buong bansa na, na, na budget na naman tayo sa ibang mga countries na malapit po sa atin. At kung ganyan po ang ating sitwasyon, ang dami pong nawala, ang dami pong naapektuhan, lalo na, lalo natin ma-experience, don't miss your boas. Don't miss your chance to be redeemed out from this mess. Don't miss your chance to have this lifetime assurance na hindi na to ulit mangyayari na pagpapalain na tayo from this day forward. Ngayon natin mas mararamdaman ang pinagdadaanan ni Ruth kasi parang ganyan ang kanyang naramdaman. Nawala po sa kanya ang lahat. Nawala ang lahat kay Ruth, nawala ang lahat kay Naomi. So sa atin, we want to be redeemed out from this mess we want to get out from this. We want everything that we have lost to get back again to us. Paano po? Who gets to have that lifetime assurance? Those who are in obedience to the Lord. Pakitanong yung katabi mo, obedient ka ba? So, ngiti-ngiti po tayo. Hindi po natin masagot ng diretsyo kung tayo po ay obedient o hindi. Pero sana po tayo po ay obedient sa Panginoon. Para makamit natin ng lifetime assurance from God. So let's see if Ruth was obedient to the Lord. In verse 3 it says, sabi ni Naomi itong kanyang order, itong kanyang command kay Ruth, sabi niya, Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. So on dali po, di ba? Ang gagawin mo lang, Ruth, just anoint yourself, maligo ka, pabanguhan mo yung sarili mo with fresh fragrance, and uh, put on your best garment, kung anong best mo na dyan, yan ang iyong suotin, at puntahan mo si Boaz, at magpakita ka sa kanya. So very simple. 
At alam niyo po, when God is teaching us something, when God is letting us do something, kapag ito po ay madaling maintindihan, kapag ito po ay madaling manguya, kapag ito po ay madaling ma-put into heart, ang daling sumunod. Tama po ba? Ang daling sumunod. Naintindihan ko eh. Uh, hindi ako masyado tinatamaan. Kayang-kaya ko yan. Gagawin ko yan. Right this very instant, I will do it. I will be in obedience. Very easy to understand. Pero hindi pa po doon nagtapos si Naomi. In the next verse it says, Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the, pu- the place where he lies and you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you shall do. So, nung binabasa ko po yan, di ko po maintindihan, bakit kailangan gawin yan? Bakit kailangan ko i-uncover his feet at doon ako sa feet niya matutulog. So, na, naranasan niyo na po ba yun? Matulog sa paa nung kasama niyo? So, bakit doon ako matutulog? I don't understand it. Why do I need to do it? I don't understand this, Naomi. Why will I follow this? So, uh, hindi practical. Hindi ko maintindihan. At madalas po sa buhay, kapag may pinapagawa po sa atin, specifically ang ating Panginoon, at hindi natin maintindihan, hindi practical, ang hirap sumunod. Di ko magets Lord eh. Tsaka na lang, next week ko na lang susunod pag nagets ko na. Ang hirap ng gapin eh. Ang hirap ng yan eh. Uh, sige Lord, uh, pag naintindihan ko na, tsaka lang ako susunod. So when we don't understand things, when we don't get it, it's hard. It's not easy to be in obedience. But look at what Ruth did in the next verse. Sabi niya dito, And she said to Naomi, Ruth said to Naomi, All that you say to me, I will do. In everything, Ruth was in obedience to Naomi. Sa mga naiintindihan niya dapat gawin, she followed. Sa mga hindi po niya naiintindihan gawin, sumunod po siya. In everything, siya po ay in obedience. So, pakitignan po lahat ang inyong katabi. Ganyan ka ba? Pakitano nga. Hirap po, di ba? Hirap eh. Paano ba yan? Buti pa si Ruth nagagawa. Sana ako rin. Bakit po? Kasi ito po yung mangyayari po. In the next verse, in verse 8 to 9, it says here, Now, it happened at midnight that the man was startled, nagulat siya, and turned himself, and there, a woman was lying at his feet. Nagulat po siya. May babae doon sa kanyang paanan. And he said, Who are you? So she answered, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. Eh may, may request pala tong si, na, si Ruth. Na, uh, Ruth has a request to gain access to that lifetime assurance in her life. So tayo rin po, may request tayo sa Panginoon. May kailangan tayo sa buhay. Lord, gusto ko rin yung lifetime assurance. Lord, gusto ko rin makamit ang bohas ng aking buhay. Pero ang tanong, are you in obedience? Were you in obedience para matanggap natin ang lifetime assurance, ang request natin mula sa ating Panginoon? Kaya po ngayon po, alam niyo po may mensahe rin ng ating Panginoon sa atin. Sabi ko nga po sa inyo, hindi po aksidente na nasa Church of God po tayo. Hindi po aksidente na nasa Marriott Manila tayo. Hindi po aksidente na tayo po ay nandito, nagtitipon-tipon every Sunday in this big city. At may mensahe po ang Panginoon sa atin at ito po yung sinabi niya na po sa atin, isa po sa dahilan kaya tayo nandito, is for us to send the light into the city. This is our role, more especially, most especially na ngayon, that we are in darkness. Literally, this complex is in darkness. Literally po, ang resorts world, nakaranas po sila ng darkness. Sobrang dilim po nung mga nangyayari po sa mga pagkakataon na yun. Right this very time, We are in darkness. Ang Manila po ay in darkness. Medyo bad shot po tayo. And right now, all the more na ang simbahan na to is to send the light into this city. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, ikaw yun. So pakisabi mo ulit sa katabi mo, ikaw yun. Tayo yun. Ikaw yun. Ako yun. Kaya tayo pinosisyon ng Panginoon dito. Hindi po aksidente yan because this is our message. Sa panahon po ng mga kasama natin dito, mga kapamilya po natin all over Villamore, sa mga hotel po na nandito, they are in darkness. Hindi po nila alam gagawin. They are blinded what to do. 
this church, its role is to send the light and guide them to the path na binibigay ng Panginoon para sa atin, para sa lahat na nandito. Amen? Amen. Sige po, palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. And that's what God is telling us right now. You could send the light to your family. You could send the light to your friends. You could send the light to the people of the city. And in any way you could do it, you could do it now. Para kumilos ang Panginoon para sa ating buhay. And in verse 10, it says here, Then he said, then Boaz said, Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning in that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. So may nakakapansin pala sa mga tao na who stays the path? Yes, maraming offer ang mundo. Maraming offer yung ibang field. May mas mayaman, may mas mahirap, may mas credible, may mas better than Boas. Pero may nakakapansin pala when you just stay the path. May nakakapansin pala when you are, your heart, your mind is in obedience. At anong tawag sa'yo pag ito po yung ginagawa natin? Ang tawag po sa inyo ay, you are blessed. Pakisabi mo nga sa katibi mo, you are blessed. We are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Yan ang tawag sa atin. You are blessed if you stay the path. If you are in obedience to the Lord. At pag tayo po ay nag-stay the path, pag tayo po ay in obedience, ano po ang makakamit po natin? In verse 11, sabi niya, And now, my daughter, do not fear. Takisabi sa katabi mo, do not fear. Dami tayong takot sa buhay, dami insecurities. Uh, hindi natin alam kung assured ang ngayon natin, ang bukas, ang coming days, ang future. Pero sabi, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Ruth, huwag kang magalala. Lahat ng sinabi mo, lahat ng request mo, request for your access for lifetime assurance, I will give it to you. Because you're a virtuous woman, meaning you're morally upright. You stayed the path. You were in obedience. Approve ang iyong request. And it's so wonderful to be approved. Amen po ba yun? It's so, such a wonderful experience to be approved. Naalala ko po tuloy nung ako po ay nag-apply uh, for my US visa. Kasi po dati po, nag-apply na po ako ng US visa with my family. So approved na po ako ng five-year multiple. Eh, ako naman po ay medyo may... Uh, foolish moments, hindi nag-iisip moments. Nung nagkaroon na po ako ng bagong passport, ang ginawa ko po sa luma kong passport, tinapon ko po. <laughs> eh, hindi ko po alam, nandun po pala yung US visa ko. So, nung ako po nakakailangan ng bagong US visa, ay nang ano po, pupunta po kami US, sabi ko, sinatahanap ng daddy ko, nasan US visa mo? Uh, tinapon ko. <laughs> <laughs> hindi ko naman alam na kailangan pa pala yun. So, old passport. So, I needed to apply on my own. So, mas mahirap po yun kasi graduating na po ako from college. So, pagdating ko po doon, nakikita ko po yung mga tao sa consul, five minutes lang po, sila po ay nade-deny, naririnig ko. Sorry, but next time, apply again. Eh, magkano po yung isang US visa for application? 7,500. Mga ganun yung presyo nun. So, in just five minutes, wala na, ubus na fly, fly away na yung 7,000 pesos, denied po sila. So ako naman po, time ko na po, pumunta sa consul, so ginandahan ko po yung ano, uh, pagbati ko, good morning, tulad po ng pag-good morning ko dito sa COG Marriott Manila, so ngit- napangiti tuloy yung consul. So naging smooth sailing po yung aming uh, transaction, at in less than 10 minutes, ako po ay nabigyan ng approval. Kinuha yung aking passport, at in the next two weeks, Babalik namin yan with your US visa already. So, saya-saya ko po. So, nandyan po yung mga tao. Nakatingin po sa akin. Sabi ko, yes, approved. So, narinig ko po yung mga bulungan nila. Uy, approved show, approved show. Sana ko rin. So, ganun po kasarap ang feeling na ma-approve. At dami po naingit noong time na yun. And that's how you experience that approval. So, US visa pa lang yun. How much more kapag ang Panginoon ang umaprove sa buhay mo? Amen? Amen. Sige po, palakpakan natin si Lord. What a wonderful experience for sure for Ruth 
na siya po ay na-approve ni Boaz. All your requests, approve na yan. Okay na yan. Access granted. In the next verse, in verse 12 to 13, it says here, Now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a closer relative than I. So, pambihira, mayroon pang however. Pakitanong nga yung katabi mo, may however ka ba? <laughs> hindi ba pwedeng forever na lang at hindi however? Sana forever na lang eh. But may however pa pag dumating yung however, pambihira. Ito na eh, nag-grant na yung access, na-approve na. Bakit may however pa pambihira naman no? So, anong sabi ni Boaz? Sige, nakikinig po si Ruth. Sabi niya, sabi ni Boaz, Stay this night. And in the morning, it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a closer of a closer relative for you, good. Let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. Lie down until morning. Masabi niya kay Ruth, ay, may mas malapit pa pala na relative kaysa sa akin kay Boaz. Check muna natin sa kanya. Ayusin muna natin yung proseso. Para maging maayos. Kapag naging maayos, sige, ako ang mag-redeem sa'yo. Pag hindi, siya. So in our lives, minsan may ganun eh. May moments of however. Sa panahon ng however. Hindi pa forever eh. However muna. How do you react in your however? Sa moments na ito na eh. Ma-approve na. Makakamit mo na yung, yung uh, kung hari, may benta ka for, uh, for a condo, for an insurance. Eh may however, hindi pa pala ngayon. Kapag sa love life, kala mo, eh siya na, siya na, siya na, pero hindi pa pala. Ah, sayang. <laughs> hindi pa pala eh. However, tsaka na yung forever, mag-aral ka muna. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Aral muna, may however eh. O sa pag ano po natin, sa pag-reach ng ating dreams, makakamit na natin yung pangarap natin. Eh may however si Lord. Hindi muna. Wait lang, wait ka lang. Tulog ka muna. How do we react to it? Tayo po ba ay magagalit? Tayo po ba ay magtatampo sa Panginoon? Tayo po ba ay tatalikod? Will we still stay the path? Will we still be in obedience to the Lord? Kahit may however. Pero ito po sinasabi ng Panginoon sa atin, kahit may however, who gets to have that lifetime assurance na kahit may however, ang nabibigyan po ng lifetime assurance ay those who still sit still. Those who still sit still. Kahit sa panahon ng however. Sige, okay lang yan. Still, I will still have to stay the path. I will still be in obedience. At kung kailangan magantay, I will sit still. Still lang. Hindi ako magtatampo, hindi ako magagalit. Still ang aking puso. Payapa ang aking puso. Bakit po? In the next verse, in verse 18, it says, Then Naomi said, Ito ang advice niya kay, Naomi, kay Ruth. Anak, sit still, my daughter. Sit still lang. Until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Sabi niya kay Ruth, huwag ka mag-alala. Tatrabahuhin ni Boaz yan. At si Ruth po, she was able to sit still. Kasi po, ang puso niya ay payapa. na tinatrabaho talaga ni Boaz. May gagawin si Boaz dyan at hindi siya papabayaan. Nag-grant na ang kanyang access. Kailangan niya lang mag-antay overnight at makakamit niya na ang kanyang pangarap. At sa ating buhay, marami rin tayong pinagdadaanan, makakarelate tayo kay Ruth. Ang hirap to stay the path, ang hirap to be in obedience. Pag malapit na may however, pero sit still, sit still, ang hirap mag-sit still. Hirap ilaban, pero okay lang. Kasi magpapakilala ang Panginoon sa atin ngayon at sino siya? I am your assurance today. I am 
The great I am is your assurance today. At itong great I am na to, this great I am, this God that we know, this God that we serve, this God that we worship, He got you covered in all the events of your life. Sa lahat ng mangyayari ngayon, sa lahat ng mangyayari bukas, sa lahat ng mangyayari in the coming days, sa lahat in your lifetime, assured na ang buhay mo. Kasi ang Panginoon ay kumikilos sa iyong buhay ngayon. Amen. Sige pala ang si Lord. At hindi lang po dyan, hindi lang sa mga sure kang mangyayari, He also got you covered in, the, in your unforeseen events. Kung magkakaroon ng aksidente, kung magkakaroon ng trahedya, kung magkakaroon na hindi mo ina-expect, sagot na ng Panginoon yan. Wala ka nang dapat iaalala. Because sabi ni God, I am your assurance today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And God is your real assurance. At yes, tao lang po tayo at minsan po tayong natempt ng mundo. Tayo po ay naofera ng mundo. Minsan napapakagat po tayo. Napapaalis po tayo sa landas na gusto ng Panginoon para sa atin. Pero ngayon, ito ang tanong ng Panginoon as the worship team will be singing here in front. Ito ang tanong ng Panginoon. Sige na, marami ka nang namiss sa buhay. Marami magkakamali. Marami tayong akala natin. Akala eh. Akala natin, ito yung assurance ng ating buhay. Mali pala. Natuto na tayo. Kaya sabi ng Panginoon ngayon, pwede ba ngayong araw na to? Pwede ka ba mag-decide ngayon? At sabihin, Lord, sa buong buhay ko, in my whole lifetime, Lord God Almighty, Ikaw na ang assurance ko. At pag Ikaw na ang assurance ko, wala na akong dapat ialala because God will never leave you nor forsake you. If God is with you, who could be against you? And He knows the plans He has for you, plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future in your whole life lifetime today. Hallelujah. If that's your prayer saying, Lord, I want you to be my assurance in my life because you're my lifetime assurance. If that's you, if you want God to be your assurance in your life, come here in the altar and we will pray for you. As the worship team sings this song, you're free to come and may God be the assurance of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those who came here in front, could you lift up your hands to the Lord today? Today you're going to receive your lifetime assurance from God. Tinay po natin i-assure ang ating buhay sa material na bagay, sa offer ng mundo. Minsan sa pera natin, in-assure ang ating buhay. Pero sila po ay binigo tayo. Pero ngayon, the real lifetime assurance is here who is our God Almighty. At hindi, hindi ka niya bibigoyin ngayon. Ipaparamdam niya sa'yo na hindi mo na kailangan matakot, hindi mo kailangan mag-worry because God is your lifetime assurance today. Sa lahat ng lumapit, sabayan niya po ako sa panalangin na ito. Panginoong Jesus, Panginoong Jesus, Lumalapit po ako sa inyo ngayon. Lumalapit po ako sa inyo ngayon. With much humility. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. You are my assurance. You are my assurance. It's not the world. It's not the world. It's not money. It's not money. It's you. It's you. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus God Christ. Almighty. God Almighty. God Almighty. You're my lifetime. You're my lifetime. Assurance. Assurance. And if you are with me, Who could me. be against me? Who can be against me? I get my strength from you. I get my strength from I you. I don't need to fear. I don't need to fear. I don't need to worry. I don't need to worry. I'm safe in your hands. I'm safe in your hands. My today is secure in your hands. My today is secure. In tomorrow. Your hands. Tomorrow. The coming days. The coming days. My whole lifetime. My whole life is secure. Is secure in the name in the of, name Jesus, of Christ. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sige palakpangan po natin ng ating Panginoon. Amen and amen. And we don't need to fear anymore. Dahil kasama natin ang Panginoon sa ating buhay. Like we lift up our tithes and offering to the Lord. And wala tayong dapat ikatakot in giving our tithes and offering. 
Wala tayong dapat ikatakot for today or tomorrow, the next days to come, kung anong kakainin natin. Because God is our assurance today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, thank you for the tithes and offering. Our God, thank you for assuring us, our God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord God, for leading us, Lord God, to stay the right path, to be continually in obedience to you. At kung may panahon ng however, Lord God, we just need to sit still. We could sit still, we could be in peace because you're assuring us that you are our lifetime assurance. At pag ang buhay namin ay nasa kamay mo, wala na kaming dapat ikatakot dahil secure kami in your hands. Lord God, salamat po sa araw na ito. Thank you for your blessing, Lord God. Thank you for your provision of your word. These are not my words, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for empowering your church, talking to your church, speaking to your church right now. And I know, Lord God, they are inspired. Lord God, they are empowered. They are enlightened. And Lord God, they're gonna do things, Lord God, all for your greater glory from this day forward. And we believe, Lord God, that this church will grow, Lord God. This church, Lord God, will send the light into the city. And many will be born again. Many will receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, in their lives. And this city will be a born-again city. Hallelujah, Lord God. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Happy Father's Day. And see you again next week.